Motorsport <laughs> Radio. The Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio. Hello and welcome to the Superbike Show here on Motorsport Radio. My name is Lester. You are live right now, unless you're not listening to us live. But we are streaming this right now live all over Tinternet. Hello and welcome. If you're brand new to Motorsport Radio, wherever you are from all over the world, I know we have lots of people uh, tuned in from all over the world, and you're more than welcome to uh, uh, spread the good word about what we do here at Motorsport Radio. We have live talk shows all throughout the week, including uh, this one right here on a Thursday, the Superbike Show, where we talk about not just superbikes, oh no, but MotoGP as well. Also, uh, road racing and uh, some mini bike news and sidecars occasionally. We get into, basically, if it's, if it's a bike and it can be raced uh, we'll talk about it it's just that uh, we thought a superbike show would be a good name for a show to be honest uh, so on tonight's show well what have we got uh, we will be talking about what happened at uh, Germany in MotoGP at the weekend uh, we will have some big breaking news um, not supposedly big but uh, we'll let you judge and decide what what type of scale the breaking news we will have is um, later in the show, we'll tease you with that. Um, also, we will uh, take your comments about uh, this week's big movers and shakers. There's been more rider um, signings and uh, shufflings in the uh, in the marketplace, and uh, we'll bring you up to date with everything uh, that's happened. Uh, so far in the BSB paddock as well. Big rumours from Kiko. He uh, has his ear to the ground, as he always does. Where would it be? Any other place? Nowhere, really. Anyone who knows Kiko will know he's nosy. Uh, also, yes, uh, he uh, has been catching up on all the uh, all the big breaking news and the latest rumours, which often turn into big big breaking news. So uh, here is the show to find out about what's happening in motorbike racing in the UK. And Kiko Giles joins us once again. Hello, good evening, Kiko. Good evening, Lester. Thanks for that big build-up. I've never had something like that before. Yes, I am nosy for anyone who knows me very well. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the show. Welcome to everyone around the world. And yeah, great to have you with us. Of course, if you are travelling to British Superbikes, maybe on a Sunday or on a Saturday, you can download this. You don't have to worry about signals or 4G. You can download this and listen back to it uh, all. Well, you can listen back to all our shows and you can listen back to it fully as well. So coming up tonight, as Lester said, MotoGP talk from Saxon Ring in Germany and maybe a little bit of a debate about whether that might be the last ever time we head to the Saxon Ring. More on that when we get it. Some big news to come from British Superbikes, British Super Sport, National Superstock 1000. There's been more rider shenanigans going on across the marketplace and also some Moto2 signings in the world of Grand Prix. Mm. And then, of course, we've got the British Talent Cup selections for next year. They came out uh, in the week, and we will be bringing you the news on that. Lots of cool fab representation, which is great for us. Fantastic, yeah. So, uh, Motorsport Radio um, provides live, exclusive live uh, radio coverage of the 2018 Cool Fab Racing British Minibikes Championship. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, representing the next round, round five, I think, in the championship next weekend yes. at Red Lodge. Uh, so, uh, tune in to, to actually hear and uh, maybe see. Uh, you know, on visual radio anyway, some of those uh, British Talent Cup riders and stars of the future racing right here today. And uh, uh, that all sinks in nicely, very nicely, uh, with the current BSB crop, because uh, many of the uh, BSB stars um, came from our Cool Fab. Uh, as will be the case in a few years' time. Even Shane Byrne was uh, sort of praising Cool Fab and uh, suggesting that a young, I think, 14-year-old rider who wants to start out bike racing get in touch with Cool Fab. So uh, if you are um, a young rider, don't know where to start, have a bit of money, have a bit of spare time, maybe don't even have a bike, contact coolfabracing.com and uh, they will hook you up everything that you need to know, even if you don't know much. They will sort you out, do not worry. Uh, so, straight into it then, and uh, I just want to say actually, before we go straight into it, um, you, we, uh, we are welcoming your, uh, your comments, suggestions and uh, messages this evening. I've got my eyeballs uh, on the old uh, uh, streams, so uh, any comments that come flooding in, uh, we will uh, we'll read out all the very best ones, so uh, make them as banterful as possible. Hello Ryan Lilly and uh, Pauline Richardson-Stafford, hello as well, uh, some uh, early people. Um, um, 
presumably got nothing else to do um, on a Thursday night. <laughs> You're more than welcome, though, uh, by the way. Um, so, it's, yeah. it's a, it is a quiet night for telly, isn't it? Yeah, well, see, what we've got on, we've got yeah. Sky News, we've got The Pledge, and then later on at 10.45, it's question time. So yeah, it's a bit of a political right. night, but, okay. oh, and we've got that silly stuff that people watch, is it, what, Island of Love or something on ITV2? Kiko's still presenting to not, to not know what that is. Anyway, um, so, yeah, <laughs> um, straight into it then. <laughs> Again, uh, MotoGP yes. <laughs> and uh, the big news, Kiko. What is it? Yeah, um, MotoGP, lots of news, lots of signings done. Uh, of course, we are really at the halfway point of this season now. Round 9 of 19. You can't really have a halfway point in 19 rounds, I suppose. But, um, yeah, Saxon Ring is where the deals have been done. And Brad Binder's the latest one to sign. He will stay another year with the Red Bull KTM team in Moto2. The South African made history on Sunday and celebrated that um, new deal by winning the German Grand Prix in the intermediate class, the first South African winner since Cork Ballington in 1980. Um, Monster Energy, um, the, the energy drink Monster, are going to be the, the title sponsors of the factory Yamaha team. Um, as of 2019 onwards, that ends the five-year collaboration that Movie Star had, the Spanish TV company kind of telecommunications, I guess they are. Um, so, yep, they're leaving after a five-year spell. Of course, Movie Star were in the championship before with Grissini when they sponsored Honda and also Suzuki. So they have their connections right the way back into the late 90s. And they also are sponsors of events. So I don't think they'll be going um, all together, but Movie Star definitely not the sponsors of the Yamaha team for next season. Alex Marquez, despite many rumours saying that he'd get the uh, a vintage Ducati ride in 2019, he has remained in Moto2. The Spaniard, younger brother of Mark, gets another crack at the whip with the Mark VDS team. We'll be talking about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing later on. And the last bit of MotoGP news is that Mika Calio, wildcard rider, who had quite a few more wildcards with KTM planned, he will probably be out for the rest of the season. He's got a severe knee injury picked up after a free practice crash on Friday at the German Grand Prix. Ligament damage, we're being told. So the Finn will be out of action for quite a long time. He was he crashed. Bike, uh, he went into the air fence. The bike followed him straight in and they both bounced out together. So, yeah, make a cardio, um, yeah, out of action for the foreseeable. Mm. So, well, uh, as, as uh, if, you, if you didn't know, as, as uh, Kiko mentioned there, um, Marquez, Alex, um, staying in Moto2 again, that's his, what, what would that be? How many seasons is that in Moto2 well, now? Uh, so that's the 15, 16, 17, oh. 18, that'll be his fifth. Fifth year. Mm. Hmm. Is he sort of missing the boat there? A little bit? Do, is it, uh, are people <laughs> he's, he's missed a few already, I think. It's, um, th th there's a very different dynamic between the Marquez brothers. Mark is one who can just jump on a bike and make it work. Alex takes a lot of time to get up to speed with things. We saw it in Moto3. We're seeing it even more in Moto2. People will say, yeah, but he should go up because he's been a front runner for a long time. But he, wasn't, he didn't have the most amazing German Grand Prix. And... He hasn't had the greatest season so far. Didn't have an amazing last season. Um, so Alex Marcus, for me, a wise decision to stay with a very, very good team in Moto2. Um, I would say as well, um, I, I would have said a few weeks ago, that maybe that's good because there is room for expansion up to MotoGP with that team. But we're still unsure what's happening. We're not sure whether Mark VDS are staying in MotoGP or just pulling out of that class. The fact that they're committing to another year in Moto2 does suggest to me that maybe their financial, well, not financial issues, but their logistical issues and managerial issues have been resolved and that they are now looking forward in a more positive light. But all in all, Alex Marquez in Moto2 for another season. Maybe it'll be him versus Brad Binder for the title next year. Oh, uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, incidentally, if you uh, if you are tracking the uh, the career movements of uh, uh, both Marquez sisters, brothers. Yes, Alex. Uh, then uh, let us know. Uh, is should he was he right to to do the deal? Should he have maybe waited to uh, see if, if if there was a MotoGP ride available? Uh, should he have took it? I uh, don't know if he had an option to do anything. Maybe not. But uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts. If you're a fan or not, or the opposite of that, a hater. We don't often we we don't oh, often we don't often get many of them. On, we on don't have show. haters, do no, we? I was just thinking that. Yeah, because usually when you only, go on Facebook. 
Uh, it's unusual because uh, the sort of show that we do and, and the kind of like, I mean, we keep baiting all the time, like, let us know, you know, how outraged are you at the, you well, know. But at, we're not uh, controversial. I mean, I'm not. certainly no, not. No, no way. So that's your, your exactly. um, no. And we'll have no politics here, as everyone knows. That's no. The politics free zone. Uh, right, so World Superbikes. Uh, yes. Not much news out of here, except what news you, there has been that has been yeah. quite big. <laughs> Major news. Uh, first of all, we heard Chaz Davies has fractured his collarbone. Luckily for them, uh, World Superbikes is on a seven-decade break at the moment, so he should be fit for the next round. Uh, but the bigger news to come out of that is World Superbikes will finally see a change of the guard at Kawasaki. Jonathan Ray, yes, we know he was staying, but the fallout between him and Tom Sykes, which we questioned last week, which may have not been real, well, Tom Sykes has left. Tom we found Sykes out it is real. It is a real yes, dispute. Yes, there is some real friction there. Tom Sykes and Kawasaki part ways after being together since 2011, I think. 2010 even, probably, when they, it was run by Paul Bird. So, yeah, a long partnership. The Provec racing banner that he is now under from the 2013 days. He's been there a long time, but Tom Sykes... Out at Kawasaki, where will he go? Some say the RSV4 Aprilias of um, Sean Muir's Milwaukee team, should they stay? There was rumours saying that maybe Yamaha, but that almost looks to say the same, to stay the same. You've got Ducati, but you'd imagine that Chaz Davies is going to stay maybe against his will to develop the bike, and they're not going to let Marco Melandri go because he's Italian. They need an Italian on the bike. Where else? Honda, would they have him? Sykes isn't exactly the most PR person, is he? And Honda is very, very focused on personality. Maybe he's coming back to Britain. We broke the rumour on uh, the show last week that Tom Sykes may well like to come back to British Superbikes. I don't think that would be too far off. I don't think that's it to the, there's to a the certain, championship. Yeah, there's a certain no, Ducati but, maybe with a... Uh looking for perhaps a team leader at the moment. Not yes, there is. Although, like we said last week, Glenn Irwin has very much so stepped up as team leader. It's been very impressive. Yes, he has. Um, any other uh, big World Superbike news or big rumours? Not really. World Superbikes has kind of fallen a bit flat, hasn't it? Um, as they you are said, during off... the... Uh... 10-year break that they have. Yeah, they've got... How, how many weeks is it now? They've got seven left of their nine weeks off. So it's ridiculous. It, it used to be the norm <laughs> in motorsport, but now I think championships have realised that you, you need to sort of have it... And if you have a three-week break in, any, in between any race, you know, fans start switching over and not paying attention to what you guys are doing. So. The problem is... The World Superbikes has always had big breaks, but it's never had nine weeks, and we've had this now for the last four years. It's, mm. you know, is there no circuit in the world they could go to and run for, for a round, even if, they, even if they had four and five weeks either side? It's better than nine. <laughs> anyway, um, we will, that's, a, that's another topic that's another for another debate day. For another debate. That Tico uh, yeah. has previously filled hours talking about... Yeah. Uh, Ranting on about World Superbikes. I tell you, I had a conversation <laughs> last week with Dave Tyson, oh, yeah. whose team has already, we've got some news coming out about that shortly. Um, we had a conversation about it last week. I don't know why me and him don't run World Superbikes. Be brilliant again. Um, Moving on. Yes. Probably British does. Superbikes <laughs> time. Uh, BSB uh, news and, uh, well, again, we said it on last week's show, I mean, we've not seen this <laughs> amount of uh, movement and goings on and drama and mid-season all, all of the news from britain now is rider changes it's, it's nothing else there's been, there's been more swapping about than on love island i tell you not that. and you know you would know not really. british superbike sent motor rapido ducati we know that they parted ways with taylor mckenzie well tommy bridewell has ended up there now there was major rumors about tommy bridewell maybe signing with imr and IMR putting out a bike for him in Superbikes. That was the rumour a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Turns out it was just a rumour after all. Tommy Byers was a motor, motor repeat at Ducati. Uh, Sam Clark has left Morello Kawasaki. Um, so that's um, Josh Elliott gone from the team and Sam Clark. Two totally different reasons. And Luke Jones is still at the team and getting very, very fast. And they have a replacement for this round. We will find out more about a permanent replacement going forward after Brands Hatch with Sam Clark. He's going back home to Australia um, next Tuesday. Taylor McKenzie is on the Batham's BMW in the National Stock 1000 class. That replaces Michael Rutter, who's going to take a more managerial position, I believe. 
Some British Super Sport news, and we're hearing that Jack Kennedy is injured, although he is at the Brands Hatch circuit. Um, some sources close to us spoke to him earlier. Uh, it's a wrist injury we're hearing. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic um, for the championship because for your visual radio viewers now, you can see that Jack Kennedy's on top of the championship by quite a distance. But if he is not fit, Ben Curry has a massive opportunity to close him down. Team IMR, Ian Moffat Racing, based in the Isle of Man. Obviously, Chrissy Rouse left the team last round for Knock Hill. Yeah. Um, they've replaced him with Anthony Johnson for Brands Hatch, but there is no superbike, we are being told. So, yeah, lots and lots of news up. there. It's, it's madness. When I, I, I was, we broke the Sam Clark news. We was the one of the first to do it. Um I, I had to do a bit of research, and just off the top of my head, I could think of nine riders that have come and gone out of stock thousand in six rounds. Yeah, it's it's unprecedented. I, I mean, I don't know what's going on. Bonkers! I really I tell do you. not know what's happened. I said on the uh, Facebook, I, for, I forget exactly who commented, but uh, I, I, I likened it to like silly season gone mad, basically. I mean, you always get like a silly season about you know rumours of people going elsewhere, but. It, this is like more than that because people are actually going everywhere, all over the place. Can't keep up. Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's really strange because last year we had none of this. It was very orderly. Everyone was quite honourable. The only rider in the in the superbike class, I think, that left was Davide Giuliano, but he was injured, left, and then and never came back. Um, should maybe Stuart Higgs put a stop to this? That's happening. And I know there's always going to be... How do you, though? How do you? Uh, it always... comes back to, yeah. the, do we introduce the transfer window? People laughed at us when we, introduced, when we mentioned that idea, but it, it, it solves these Without issues. it, this is what happens, obviously. You get, some, you get some riders turning up, big announcement, everyone's going crazy, and then one race in, rider says, mm, uh, it is, I, it, I was talking to Steve Buckingham about this on the phone the other day, and it's almost like as soon as things don't go right for what for a rider, they are off. They're not willing to work on it. The bike has to be perfect from the off. Never known a season like it, ever. World mm. Superbikes has been a bit like it as well. We've got had Carol Haneke, Andre Jezek, um, Andriotzi all on the Guandolini Yamaha. Riders coming and going for Honda. It's just... I don't know what's happened. I really don't. The whole motorsport or motorcycle racing world is just gone mad yeah and that, uh, can i just say that's nine riders in stock thousand that's not taken into account taylor mckenzie leaving motor rapido tommy bridewell being sacked from Halsall. chrissy rouse going to Halsall. there's endless amounts and that uh, that might not be the end of it yeah we're only at halfway in the uh, in but the in the not even completed halfway and some at of these Snetterton, at Snetterton, Tommy Bridewell was told he wasn't needed after after free practice three. Yeah, exactly. In the we, same, we could yeah. happen more this weekend. We really do not know. It's a uh, it's a weird one. Same <laughs> thing strange. happened at Knock Hill as well with uh, who was Taylor McKenzie. Yeah, as, as, we've got Carl Ride as well. Ben Luxon's gone from OMG at Stock in Stock Thousand. Carl Phillips from Superbike. Mm. On and on and on. But seriously, though, I mean, should. I mean, maybe this is more of a question for, for you tuned in, but uh, yes. should should Stuart Higgs, could he do anything about it? And does it, if there's too much of this sort of dancing about from team to team based on, you know, one ride over in a bit of a bad weekend. And, and let's not forget, only one person wins a race. Everyone else loses. There's not going to be ever one winner. So based on that fact the rest of the grid is going to be swapping around if they're not happy because they didn't win the race. Do you see how silly it can get now? How do you put the, a stop to it? The so. thing is, it, it, in a way, I don't, I don't know if it does. The, the, we could solve it by having the transfer window, but that almost gives it a license then for riders to move about. But it's but, more regulated then. A, a, exactly. And it, it, but, but without, without thinking hard, hard about it, how do you... How do you counter it? Because I suppose it, what because what, it, yeah. riders just deciding anyway whether we reg regulate it or not. Mm. The, the, the riders are just exercising power, and, and especially I, some riders I'd, who, who bring I'd money. That, I'd argue that riders shouldn't have more power than teams. Well, the riders who are customers, 
perhaps yeah. you know they they feel like their money could be better spelt spent elsewhere with maybe a you know a let's say a better operation a better outfit a better bike a uh, better experience that sort of thing and in some ways they're entitled to do that but what seems to happen in other motorsports um going to the four-wheeled variety and uh touring cars oh, um well alan gow brought in a uh, a license and uh, he rented so he rented those licenses out for a fee so that it becomes less attractive for a driver for example or a team to just get rid of a driver or someone else it does happen still you're always going to get that but it's not as it's not as much like you don't uh, you, you rarely almost ever get people just coming in for a couple of races and then buggering off or people funding enough for just two or three races basically and maybe that could be a thing i don't even know to be honest uh but let us know if you think if, yeah let us know your thoughts yeah um, join the conversation exactly um so um yeah talking about uh bs bill and uh and ducati and bridewell as well um a lot yes. of, a lot of people have been linking uh tommy to the ducati for next year especially with him uh, going over to uh, motor rapido yeah uh now that was a rumor actually at setterton maybe he will get the poor bird bike I don't know. Is this, do you very, think this is maybe a trial? Very early days. Very early days. We've got to see how Tommy goes on the Motor Rapido Ducati. We know that bike's quick. We know Tommy's quite quick. So maybe save that for after brands. I'm not sure. Bridal on a Ducati, to me, he's one of the most versatile riders on the grid. He can more or less ride anything um, to a good level and he will give it some time. And he should be top seven, top eight, like he was for, him, for this house or Suzuki at one point. But again, got to give it time. He does like Brands Hatch GP, though, so this might be a good... A lot of people like good, it. True, but Tommy always shines here, so maybe it's going to be one of them rounds where we can really see how he's going to go. Well, uh, talking about Brands GP, it is this what? weekend, and it's the second of three... Uh, events uh three races uh that bsb go to uh, again there's another conversation about what do they go to brands too many <laughs> times uh that's another topic for another day tell me tell me a place though where we can <laughs> um have the good facilities we have at brands let us know <laughs> let's try I'm, to I, I, you know i'm so against the grain on that i have no problem with brands hatch on three times a calendar because then People will moan at that and three times, we've got to go down south three times a year. All right then, so we'll go Mallory Park. And they will all be cramped up, there'll be no room to move. Mallory Park has some great facilities, just like to say hi Mallory. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> but I, know, I know what you mean. And there the are three, three events in one place, I, I know, but uh, that's, uh, that's up, entirely up to MSV and, and they run the superbikes. Um, so Probably yourself. Uh, there you go, I suppose, nice... nice Nice uh, problem if it is such a thing uh, to have, uh, but it is this weekend uh, the second of three uh, brands races, and uh, well, Leon Haslam um, looking. I suppose this no one's going to beat him though, is there? <laughs> hasn't won this. Hasn't won this since two thousand and six on the GP course. I tell you, Leon Haslam, he was beaten at Knock Hill. He was beaten by Jake Dixon on another Kawasaki. I think the Kawasaki is just an all-conquering bike at the moment, in superbike form. Leon Asden will be up there. I'm fairly sure that he does go well at Brands, we know that. But he's coming back to a track which he has bad memories of from last year. He lost the championship there last year. Yeah, absolute nightmare, didn't he? It's just a catastrophe for him. But having said that, we're seeing Leon now do what we know Leon can do. And that's just win races, no lower than third, podiums podium points, racking up, thinking long term, thinking of the showdown and his points advantage going there. No one else is really taking it to him. You know, there's no one who's constantly second. It's a bit Mark Marquez, you know. Marquez is winning, but there's no one constantly second behind him. It's not it's no one consistently being the same rider behind. So Leon has them at the moment, he's got a clear advantage over anyone else. That's that he's winning and that no one else can really keep up with him consistently each week. Having said that, Danny Bucken likes Brands Hatch as well. And I do think Danny Buckin may well just be in with a chance of this this weekend. Another you do tip Danny Buckin every week, though, to be fair. I do, and have I been right? Have I? Sometimes. Come on. No. Since I started at Snet two, two rounds ago, Danny's not been lower than fifth. Okay. So, so I'll I have you know. 
Okay, so that's, so that's, why is that then? Why why is he going? Apart from the fact he is just a good rider, but what uh, else? What else could it be? He's matured. He's matured so much. He, he in a way. At the end of 2016, he was like I spoke to him about this last year. He was a little bit lost. He didn't really know where his career was going and in what direction. Took the step back to Stock Thousand with Steve Buckingham's Morello team, and he didn't dominate, but he wasn't far off it. It went down to the last race of the year, but he put himself in a very favourable position and he took the championship. And he is that year off from being high pressure superbike, trying to prove his doubt as wrong. Coming back to Stock Thousand, taking a second title there, he has matured in, to a way where it's almost it's a seamless transition now into superbikes. He's jumped on a, into the FS3 team that had a, a really difficult time last year. The first year they were in the paddock in 16 wasn't too bad, but last year was difficult in Stock Thousand and in um, superbikes. If you look at their Superbike point score from 2016 and 2017 and add it up, Danny Bucking on his own after five rounds has already gone past both of them. Both of that added up. So Danny's having a great season and I, he's riding the crest of the wave and you've got to ride it, as Colin Wright said on the show, for as long as you can. FS3 Kawasaki looking a real good package this weekend. And Danny's just, in, I think he's just enjoying life. You know, he's always happy. Mm-hmm. Bounces around the paddock. He's smiling, and honestly, an, an happy rider is a fast rider, and it, that, it just goes to show. Brad Ray's looking to return to the podium uh, this weekend. He had a good uh, round at uh, uh, Brands last time, didn't he? He did second and seventh. Um, seventh in the wet. I don't think we're going to see rain at Brands Hatch this weekend. Um, but yep, second in the dry. Brad will definitely be up there. I'm fairly sure this weekend. It's his local circuit. Gino Ria is setting his sights on the top 10, which is very, very good to see. The OMG Suzuki team uh, switch from K-Tech to Olin's, and again, a really good understanding of Olin's now, uh, looking to go forward in the right direction. Got some uh, news of with OMG coming up uh, in a bit. Anyway, we'll come to the end of the news bit of, uh, or preview bit of Superbikes first. Tyco BMW and Honda will be desperate for podiums. I am absolutely certain of that. They need podiums now to really start launching their championship assault because to do that they have to get in the showdown at the moment Tyco BMW aren't doing too bad but Honda it's difficult because both riders are coming back from an injury Dan Linford's more or less getting there now Jason Allen though took a knock at Snetterton and it really didn't help him Josh Brooks always goes well at Brands Hatch uh, GP circuit seven wins for him there in the past most of them on Yamaha's He's on a Yamaha. It's their 20th anniversary this weekend. Don't bet against Brooksy to make it eight or nine wins this weekend. He really could be one of the riders to beat. Peter Hickman needs to start getting up to the sharp end again because he is just on the fringe of the top ten at the moment. He needs to be sixth or higher. I think he'll come, but he's again he's he's running out of time. Um, to do it, we are coming into the second half of the first bit of the season of the show of, of the pre-showdown. Hickman needs to top fives now all the way. We know he can do it. This is where he started coming good last year. James Ellison looking to do the same. He's won at the track before back in 2016 was the last time. That was for Kawasaki. Anvil Hire Tag Racing had a great um, outing at the track last year. Rob Winfield, Swadden Coat based team, uh, second in race one, and almost looked like a certain second in race two until Josh crashed out. But yeah, that's um, it's looking good. Brands Hatch GP, don't miss it. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly will be, and uh, well, I'll I'll try and find the uh, uh, times and uh, TV times uh, or what channel they're on because it's not always on the the right. You know, it's sometimes on Quest and uh, yes, and or it's sometimes thing. filmed to a shoe on uh, it's put onto Quest. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, otherwise known as the brilliant production team that uh, Eurosport have. Um, but uh, yeah, um, so uh, will will uh, will Chrissy Rouse then? Kiko, um, do you yes. think do you think he'll go well this weekend? I think he'll I think he'll go a lot better than he did at Knock Hill, and I do not mean that in a in a bad. Chrissy had a great Knock Hill, really. You look at he's had no time on the Suzuki he at had, all. He had no expectations, did he? No expectations, and he was running on the fringes of the points. You know, point nine off round Knock Hill. Okay, that's two seconds anywhere else, but you know, within a second of pole at one point he was. This is Motorsport Radio. Join the conversation and have your say on motorsport-radio.com. 
Motorsport Radio. The Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio. Hello, and yes, this is the Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio. My name is Lester. Thank you very much for tuning in. And, uh, well, we are uh, in the midst of talking about, uh, well, MotoGP here at the moment. And, uh, well, I can tell you that... uh, Yes, uh, amongst other things. Uh, Well, we were talking about uh, BSB and uh, World Superbikes and uh, all the other good stuff that happened there. Um, Also, to to bring Kiko Giles back into the uh, show, who's been uh, diligently uh, uh, with us uh, throughout uh, uh, everything. Kiko, uh, yeah, just uh, give us a quick recap uh, for those who uh, who, who missed the the MotoGP monologue then. Uh, Yeah. What was John about the Saxon Rings venue? Oh, yes. And- yeah, why, why, or why should the MotoGP go back to the Saxon Ring, and uh, will it? Old school, traditionalist, I like to see the Saxon Ring back next year. I never really used to like the track, thought it was a bit boring, but it's pretty unique. You can't say that there's another circuit in the world like the Saxon Ring. It's all them left-handers and a big drop out of Ralph Valdman curve. For me, it is a little bit bordering on the safety side of things. I'd like to see maybe a a, a solution made there instead of us going off to the Nürburgring, which has been sanitised and wrecked by Herman Tilker's design. Um, But again, the Nürburgring is not a bad circuit. There's better. um, It's got a brilliant build to the end of the lap, and that's something the Saxon Ring is missing, I think. Um, We've got the chicane just before the last corner and the fast S's between... Um, the bottom of the hill, I uh, can't remember, is it turn six? It used to be the Coca-Cola corner, I think it was, years ago. Um, or the Castrol curve. If you come up the uh, up the hill, it's fast left, fast right, into another left, into another right, then it's a fast right into the last chicane and the hairpin. It's got a brilliant end to the last lap, and that, you know, could be a, could we could see some thrilling finishes there. But again, the Saxon ring is just the way it is. It's the, the way of culture such is down there uh, in Saxony. I, I really do like it. And also, it's not been wrecked either. The circuit's relatively By Herman Tilker is what you were going to say. By Herman Tilker. <laughs> we were saying before, Serpang, did he, he did Kota. Uh, that he, was that, one of his better ones, though. Circuit what, Kota? Yes. It's terrible. Okay. Five or six first gear corners. That's not a great circuit. The first section is fine if you take turn one out, and then it all goes wrong. You've got, uh, well, you did Yas Marina, it's, again, another ball fest. You've got, um, what's the other one? You've got um, Hockenheim, the other German circuit. Could We could go there, but again, it's littered with hairpins now, and it's pointless because it's a car circuit, for, and that never work. Yeah, just, Herman, if you're watching, just, Retire, please. Oh, uh, so yeah, it's uh, Kiko's question time, and uh, we're asking him uh, basically uh, which tracks and various outrages and how outraged is he at various things this week. Uh, the weekly question time for Kiko. Um, of course, if you are German, we're not <laughs> hating all Germans. Just, just, just if you're a circuit designer uh, slash engineer, named, and your, uh, and your, yeah, if your name begins with H and ends in Ermin Tilka. Not one favourable so, um, ratings over here at Motorsport Radio Towers. All right, uh, so let us know <laughs> what your thoughts on the uh, whether MotoGP maybe will and and should if it does should it go back to the Saxon Ring? If not, where would it go? go I I I'd rather it's uh, this is how I, I mean the one consolation we have is it's not going to the Lausitz Ring. Another all German circuits, bar the next one I'm about to mention, are awful. The Nürburgring's okay. Oschersleben, that's a great track. They are, is it the eight hour there? The Oschersleben eight hours? Great circuit. World two parties used to go. Might not be safe enough for MotoGP, but that can be worked around. Brilliant circuit. Fun circuit. Yeah, I'd rather it go there. Okay. Facilities wise, it might be a, la- a bit lacking, but the thing is, if they do go to the Nurburgring, do you reckon they'll go to the old Nordschleife? Well, Chris Middlehurst, uh, hello, Chris, uh, asks that. Um, will they go there? Uh, of course, no. Don't be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> you, know, you know why. And uh, um, Chris Middlehurst. Uh, 
uh, race driver as well. Uh, also dipping his toe in, maybe uh, getting on a bike as well, perhaps, I saw on Facebook. Uh, probably shouldn't have admitted that. It came up on my feed anyway. I wasn't stalking, honest. Um, uh, hi, Chris, oh, yeah, if you're tuned yeah, yeah. in, uh, if you're still tuned in anyway. Uh, and uh, hello to uh, Carl Stewart, uh, says, um, been on, and uh, say, fast tracks always make the best racing, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Oh, come on then, come on then. Well, fast tracks, yes, are good and spectacular when something goes wrong, for example, or when there's a, a close fight, but it doesn't always necessarily in every... Because, think about it, if fast tracks always made great racing every single time, there would be nothing but just fast, amazing, long straighted tracks all over the place, wouldn't there? It doesn't have to be long straight, though. Look at Assen. Assen's fast. But it is bloody good racing every year. Some of the, like Austria, the Red Bull Ring, what a terrible circuit. It's only got the highest average speed because it's all straight. We're connected by hairpins. Bad circuit. No mm. flow, no momentum. Just dead. It's dead. Salzburg Ring would be better. Of course, we're not going to go there. But, you know, that's that, that, name me the last motorcycle race on a fast track, like fast and flowing circuit, that was bad. Um, it answers on a postcard. Yes, let us know. Preferably on tweet for the twenty first century way of communication. Interesting one from uh, Chris has been back on again and uh, suggested maybe go to Zandvoort. That's an that that would be a an interesting suggestion. Don't know enough about Zandvoort. It is. It is a great track for cars. It, anyway, I believe it's Dutch. Am I right in thinking it's Dutch? Oh, Zolder. Yeah. I always get Zandvoort and Zolder wrong. Zolder's Belgian. Am I right? Uh, correct. Yeah, is it? Yes, Zandvoort. Yeah, when Zandvoort you fly to Amsterdam, is. It's it's literally it's the beach. It's an, it's an amazing Formula Four sixteen hundred track. I can tell you that. <laughs> it, it, it just is. Uh, and I won't wait, I won't. How did you bring this championship <laughs> in when we're talking about MotoGP? People love all types of different racing. Shut your face. We're, we're talking about bikes. I'm just saying that's like, and it's not just... the kind of bikes you get in Manchester on a Saturday night after a kebab. Just. <laughs> We're on about MotoGP and circuit. Stop right. bringing in four wheels. <laughs> it's not the time or place. Well, I'll stop bringing in four wheels when you stop bringing food into bike into bike what? shows. What's bring food in? Yeah, I only bring food when it's relevant. Such when I did Everquip or well, partake to, par participated in Everquip Racing's uh, Scottish Barbecue Fest that we had two weeks ago. Very nice. Sorry about the steak. Yeah, they're still wondering who stole all that steak. It was Plus you. Now. It was the team's best weekend. Oh, yeah. To be honest, yeah. we had his best qualifying. <laughs> More reasons to celebrate. Send me the invoice. Right, so yeah, moving on then to, uh, to Moto 2. And yes. uh, yeah, the um, uh, uh, South African, Brad Binder. Wow. What about it? Well, what about it? <sighs> History maker. First South African winner in Moto 2 ever. First time since, I believe, 1980 in Cork Ballington that we've had a South African winner in the intermediate class, which is 250s or, or Moto 2. What a day for them. And he's celebrate, obviously celebrating his, his new contract as well with the team, the Red Bull KTM team. So, yeah, amazing stuff. Brad Binder doing South Africa proud, uh, carrying a nation, really, on his shoulders there. Um, if we don't go to South Africa in the next five years, when the Binders will be... At the sharp end of MotoGP, I'm fairly sure, then we've got a problem. Uh, wasn't just all about Binder, though. Uh, the championship leaders struggled. Uh, Baldazari high sided it dramatically at turn two. Peko Bagnaia was forced off track to avoid Mattia Pessini. The Italians not doing themselves much good. But Luca Marini was third and Gian Mir was second. So the two youngsters really coming into a bit of form. Miguel Oliveira closed down the championship lead. He finished fourth, so yes, it is very much game on at the forefront of Moto2 at the moment. Uh, it, is, uh, it is good stuff, and uh, yeah, good to, to hear about uh, uh, Binder's, uh, let's say, rise to the top, let's say. Um, yes, he's going... no mug, he's no mug, he, uh, 2016 Moto3 champion, of course, so mm. we know he's got it. Can I mean, he... we know he's got it from last year because he was uh, had quite a few second places towards the second half of last year. Had that horrendous arm injuries that started last year. He really has come back strong. We know he likes the Saxon ring. He was a, a bit of an outside bear. I didn't have him. Uh, question is though, can he uh, can he actually go all the way and uh, do more? 
You, I, I don't think he'll be far off. It's very interesting now. He knows he can win. It'll be interesting to see if the floodgates open and see if he can win more. It's exactly what happened in Moto3. Once he won one, he couldn't stop winning. He creamed the championship. I think it's a bit late to do that now. He may be on a late run, though. We just do not know. Mm. Uh, watch this space, I would say, yes. um, to uh, to that, certainly. And, uh, um, yeah, we'd uh, welcome your uh, comments and uh, anything that you uh, care to uh, talk about. Uh, if there's any big news breaking, um, we did have some news breaking earlier on the show, uh, which we will go back to and just remind you, um, if, uh, if you if you don't uh, remember what it was. Uh, it was Ooh. good. Um, so, yeah, Moto3 then, and, uh, sorry, sh I should probably just ask, have we, have we concluded all the Moto2 stuff that we were going to talk we about? We have. I don't think Moto2 has any more relevance. We've done the news oh. earlier about Alex Marquez. Um, so, yes, I think we're all uh, good to crack on with Moto Trez. Yay! Uh, Moto3 then, and uh, it's, uh, it's old Martin. Old Martin. <laughs> I'm going to call him Martin. George Martin. Hiya, George. George Martin. <laughs> you know, it's probably a George Martin listening in, thinking, why the bloody hell are they mentioning my name? Uh, yeah, he's uh, not exactly running away with it as much as he had been doing previously, but, uh, well, he's still no. on top, though. He is. Uh, he is on top. Marco Bezzecchi was second. The gap is now seven points in the championship. That is nowhere near a conclusion. Jorge Martin nearly got taken out by his own teammate at the Saxon Ring, so we know that um, he's a bit vulnerable. And one mistake from Jorge Martin, and it all goes wrong. Bezeki second, but it was Britain's John McPhee in third. He's only Scottish when he's not doing very well. He is British when he's on the podium. John McPhee, third place for the Scotsman. Wow, a race that was. Nearly second, but yeah, great stuff. We knew he could do it. He's, he's been promising it for a while. Crashed out of ass and wanted to make up for it, and he did make up for it. So, we McPhee flying again. We whip me uh, There you go. Um, so, so proud of him. I can't even speak. But, uh, yeah, well done. Mm. Uh, well done, uh, uh, John. And, uh, yeah, other uh, Moto3, I think I just saw a question regarding uh, uh, Sam Lowe's uh, from Carl Stewart. Or Carl Stewart asks about Sam Lowe's. Um, Kiko, um, do you think yes. maybe uh, his results so far uh, keep his job in the same team? Or, so I suppose... Uh, he's, he's asking, do you think his results so far this year have, have meant he's he's done enough to stay? No. Okay. No, not at all. Just looking at him now, actually, because I knew someone was going to bring up the Sam Lowe's question. I had a feeling it was coming. Yeah, okay, his recent form. Three, uh, three, three top tens. We're talking about someone who has got how many motor two podiums? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Motor three podiums, eleven. Uh, motor two podiums. Sorry, he's no mug. He's he's, he's won three races. What? Where, where's it? Where's it gone wrong? What? I mean, we may okay. Maybe the KTM's not as developed as we think it is. It's very easy to start choosing manufacturers based on one year. It's happened in BSV with the Yamahas, and they've took a couple more years to get going again. But Sam Lowe's is a quality rider. Been in MotoGP. He's just been crashing too often. Way too often. Um, it's it's a difficult one. I, at this moment in time, I'd be looking now for podiums. I think they're coming. If he can do well at Silverstone, I think that's make or break for his uh, 2019 campaign. But so far, if I was a team owner, I wouldn't. I, I'd be looking to keep him, but I would not be signing anything just yet. What do you think, if you are tuned in and uh, are listening to us right now live, uh, is, is Sam Lowe's in, in real danger? And uh, what might happen to him? Is he, is he in the sort of Scott Redding type situation where he's, uh, he's, struggling. he's struggling? Well, Scott Redding has got his head down, let's be fair. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I, I, I was going to find the picture. Uh, yeah, oh, the, I've been dying to drop that in all yeah. show. I, I was. I forgot all about it, to be honest. Um, and, uh, and then I, you should have rem reminded me. Um, I'll try and find it. Have you, have you been pulled down off the roof yet? You just went so high, I can't <laughs> believe it. You give Steve Buckingham a ring, and then Morello a roof. I, the reason was, I was, I was on the verge. No, I was on the verge of uh, actually doing a, a parody, a parody song about. Uh, 
I forgot what song it was now, but you know when you're sort of like l listening in your car to various music, and have you ever done this? Have you ever like started singing and putting like stupid lyrics to the songs and on the radio and stuff like that? And uh, and that and and the picture of Scott Redding with his head on the floor, um, going through a corner for some reason or wh wh wherever it was. Um, that happened anyway, and I just thought, oh, that might just make a... Uh, but then I thought, no, it's probably just too... Uh, he might uh, probably think we're just taking too much of the piss out of him. And he, <laughs> and he might have been right. So but... Says the guy who really advertised him well in the most marketable way. What? Saying he is thick as something for the That blank. was a direct quote. Yes, I know that. That's what I'm saying. He's hardly done himself any favours. So I don't think he'll mind if we carry it on. Well, the, and he thinks hmm. he's good that he's got his head down at last on the circuit. Hang on a minute, Cal Crutcher gets his head, his elbow, his leathers running through gravel traps every weekend. So Scott Redding, you're not doing that good, are you? <laughs> right. Leave the bullying of the British alone for, for now. Oh dear. Uh, um, oh dear. <laughs> if you've not seen it, we'll try and put it up on the Motorsport Radio uh, yes. Twitter and uh, and the Facebook as well. Um, did he reply to us the other week? Did I? Did he? Re uh, he did. Scott Reddy. Did, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Um, on the on the on the on the quote. If you've not seen that, go, uh, scroll back on the it's uh, at M Sport Radio uh, on the uh, on the old uh, Twitter. I feel like we've really accomplished something there. Two. One, we've been recognised by quite a start, and second one, Scott actually typed something in english he uh, it, well the, the the meme sort of kind of like went uh, like half viral and it got shared about quite a lot and then he replied to another account um which we were already tagged in and he was sort of replying to like the wrong people he thought he was replying to us but uh, i seen it anyway uh hello scott if you're watching by the way uh you're yes. more than welcome to come on uh, a big hello to wayne douglas as well who's tuned in oh. to the show uh for i presume the first time ever where, where, where have you been wayne uh who may or may not be at spa at the moment if it is that wayne douglas uh, um niall roberts uh Barra Gray, uh, uh, hi Niall, sorry. Uh, he, he asks a question, Kiko. He asks. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just bad at doing names, sorry. Uh, you don't need to clarify. <laughs> um, uh, referring to, uh, I think it might be Scott Redding, um, he is, uh, no, um, maybe uh, Lowe's actually. He is to Moto2, what Cal is to Moto GP. Cal is a great rider, but yet again, he keeps falling off. So we're along the same lines as what you said, basically. Um, does Cal keep falling off then? Yeah. That's literally his nickname. Cal, Cal crashed though. Okay. Let me just pull up his results. Yes, he's been a lot better this no, season, no, no, as we no, all no, know. We're and, not and going he... climbing out of holes now, Lester. You just sit there. I love it when people it's get not, the It's Cal not about climbing out of holes. Though. It's just called being balanced and having an opinion. But it's not balanced. See what right, you're starting now, Niall. So, Unbelievable. So, yeah. <laughs> so we have a look. <laughs> right. Two retirements this year. Spain Right, and well, Germany. not every crash results in a retirement, in does Cota. it? How no, many? 19th in Cota. He crashed there, finished the race. Everything else, he has been no lower than eight since Valencia last year. Yeah, so, Niall? Yes, he crashes, but he's, he's the only Brit doing anything. Yeah. I hate to say it. People get on Cal Cutshow's case. There is no Brit doing anything. Well, I if, rate Johnny he makes, Ray a better no, I mean, than Cal Cutshow. Johnny he, Ray, if he was in MotoGP, would probably do the, the exact same. Oh, Consistent sixth place. He didn't go there, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe in MotoGP, uh, I mean, how's, uh, how's old uh, Brad Smith getting on then? Well, he's got his first top ten of the season. We're nine rounds in. Yeah. I don't know if that speaks more about the bike, but... Maybe. I mean, Paul Espargo decided to launch it at turn three, start doing his pole dancing again. Well, he is pole. <laughs> no, he's not. He's Spanish. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd, uh, has he ever been on pole position? Uh, he was top of warm-up. That's a first, actually. We'll I, get I, I'm just waiting for that, for yeah, that yeah. headline. It's just an obvious thing to... He, well, he's been in pole in other classes, obviously. Um, but no, KTM topped um, a session for the first time since they've been back in MotoGP where everyone else was out on track at the same time. Obviously, they've topped um, qualifying one, but not all the bikes are out then. But yeah, pole to Spargo, top warm-up. And that's what that crash came from, trying mm. to live up to expectations, trying to win the race in the lap. And yeah, subsequently ended up three other people's races as well as his own. Stretcher for depression, anyone? 
Uh, James Young has been on. Hi, James. Uh, saying, um, going back to, to what you said as well, uh, Kiko, that Cal is doing better than any other Brit in MotoGP at the moment. So, uh, are yes, hard clever people to tune into this show then. Uh, yes, of course <laughs> they are. And, uh, and no other type of, of, of people tune in. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're asking tonight, well, we were sort of trying to ask until uh, things started to go where uh, the show had a bit of a high side. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, we were asking anyway, uh, maybe I've not even asked, I don't think I've asked at all to be honest, my negligence has, has just ref just complete that, I just presumed, I thought it in my head and I thought I'd said it. You, you know like when you like don't reply to an email or a text but you did in your mind and there was like, oh, you didn't reply, so I did, did I? I don't remember. Anyway, um, no. yeah it's mm. called uh, Dementia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, <laughs> uh, the uh the Petronas Yamaha we uh, touched uh we touched on it earlier. Um yes. or rather you did. Um who's gonna be on it? Who who would you choose? Right. I am gonna get shot at for saying this. Franco <laughs> Mobdelli is the obvious choice. But people are going on about Fabio Quartararo way too soon for Fabio. One race win in Catalonia and won second place at um, Assen. Does not Sorry, Fabio, if you tuned in. Does not constitute a MotoGP ride. However, someone like, and people who have seen me on Twitter over the last couple of weeks will notice, Alvaro Bautista should get that ride. Great development rider. Suzuki, unfairly treated, I think that's fair to say, but when they pulled out and never offered him back when they returned. Went and developed that Honda he was on and got podiums on that. Went to Aprilia. Oh, look what has happened to Aprilia since he left and Stefan Bradl left. They've gone nowhere but backwards. That's why I feel a bit sorry for Scott Redden and Sam Lowe's of last year. He developed the Aprilia. He's now on a, a year-old Ducati beating the factory bikes. Now they've got that bike sorted. Tell me that is not good enough for, for a ride in MotoGP. We're talking about someone. Okay, yeah, he might have had his chance. He is a crasher, we know that. But Alvaro, four top t uh, four top tens on the bounce, hasn't had that in two years. He is not doing a bad job. Alvaro, shall we pull up the championship standings and have a, a look where he's at? Let's have a look, shall we? Alvaro Bautista, 13th in the championship. 9th, 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 5th. That's his last four results. Okay. Uh, uh, before that, he retired at Le Mans. He was Eighth, that they they found something. Hareth, he was top ten at Hareth. If you look where he is in the championship, Alvaro Bautista, thirteenth, he is five points off a of factory Honda of Danny Pedro. So we know he's not in his mind's not in that properly. Let's be fair, you know. And really, what he's on 44, 20. If he was to win a race, say it puts him on sixty nine, and that puts him in the top ten. He is, uh, he doesn't even need that. He needs, what are we on, 44 to get to the top 10. He needs a fourth place. He nearly got a fourth place in Germany. As far as it's you, over the if, season if, you are, if you're, you're going to judge someone. Team coming into MotoGP, you need to develop a bike. Okay, Alvaro's never been on the Yamaha, but he never been on a brilliant before they came into it in a MotoGP class, and he developed that. So why, why do you not want that? Well, instead... You run the risk of getting... Franco Morbidelli, who's not been on the Yamaha and only had a year in MotoGP, and he's missed the last two races, so he's not fully fit. And you've got Fabio Quartararo, who's done more or less nothing in Moto2 until this year, and even that was at Assen. Didn't, I don't think he... I don't believe he did a lot at the German Grand Prix. Shall we have a look? Fabio Quartararo, yeah, ninth. There are much better riders deserving that ride at Petronas Yamaha. I'm not saying Fabio will never get to MotoGP. He will be in MotoGP. He's still so young. Bags of talent. But do not give him too much too soon. You run the risk of having Neil Hodgson syndrome of the 90s, having to come back to Britain and effectively restart his career and then become champion. But wasted so many years trying to prove himself to That's people. That's a syndrome? When... No, it's not. But if you look at it, what, what good's giving it to Fabio Quartararo? Well, he might what, do well on it. I do. Might do. He's, Just because you hate rush? him. What's the rush? I don't hate him. Just there's <laughs> better like you riders. Do. There's better riders out there. I I mean I, I don't. Alvaro Bautista, he will get a top ride in World Superbikes if he goes there. Um, but he could go to Avintia. They're not signed up properly for next year yet. Mark Reed, yes. If they stay around, maybe he can jump back on a Honda. We know he's good on more or less every bike he's rode. And the Yamaha, I don't think, will be any different. Hmm. 
he's very marketable. He works well with the female riders. He's a big uh, sponsor of, uh, I think, it's, uh, Maria Herrera. So that on its own is a PR um, magnet. Been around, got good contacts. Very, very likable rider. Why would you not want him? Exactly. Why not? I right. feel Alvaro's being very hard done by. I don't I've got to say, I feel sorry for him. Okay. Uh, let us know what you think. If you care either way, if not, uh, then carry on. Just, just what, to what are you doing? just to clarify, but Alvaro was fifth in Germany. Behind him, let's just have a look. So he was five seconds off the race win on a year-old bike. He was half a second ahead of Jorge Lorenzo, ahead of Andrea De Vizio. So the only other Ducati that was ahead of him was Danilo Petrucci, which was as well an independent team factory bike. So. You know, well, I, I, I've said it for so long, Alvaro, and Ed Hocknell will agree with me on this, when he came on last year, remember that? Alvaro's so underrated. He, if he was on a factory bike, I have no question, top five, six in the championship. Maybe he's just underrated because uh, Everyone's he's, underrated he's underperforming. For a reason. Yes, exactly. He, he has underperformed, but he's, he's turning it around. Because usually if you overperform or perform well... Uh, then you get rated pretty highly. I do. And I think Alvaro's going to start doing it. But I think because he's been around for so long, people almost expect it now. <laughs> but so it, so it, I just people, had a comment. But people overlook the fact that uh, more or less every bike Alvaro's... Let's look, at, let's look back through his history. So in his first year of MotoGP, his best result was a fifth. In his uh, second year of MotoGP, his best result was a fifth. In his uh, second, uh, third year, his best result was a third. Then it was a fourth, a run of fourth. Then it was a third on the Aprilia. And this was a bike that had no pre-season testing on it at all. It was a uh, tenth. Then it was the year later a seventh. Last year it was a fourth. And this year's a fifth. We're not. We're talking about someone who is very rarely outside the top twelve in the championship. Uh, Carl Stewart's been on. Hi, Carl. And uh, he, uh, you know what's coming. I don't know if someone's going to shoot me. Uh, he says, uh, best comment yet. Uh, if he wins a race, it'll put him in the yeah. top ten. Yeah. What I'm getting <laughs> no at... No shit. <laughs> yeah, 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 but what I'm getting at is, Alvaro Bautista, people may laugh. I would not even question Alvaro getting a podium around this year. Somewhere like Australia, where they get a wet, free practice, windy Saturday, and it's sunny on Sunday... He nearly... How far was he off the podium at Germany? Let's have a look. So he was 2.4 seconds away. Sorry, but I just think that's... Too only far. Was fastest lap. Alvaro Bautista from ninth on the grid, we're talking about, was, um, was fifth. If you're, not, if you're not first, then you... You know where, are you? You're going to do that? Oh, there's no points for second place. Oh, but actually there is kind of thing maybe uh hello to jay king who's uh, joined us hello uh, jay. good evening he's and, be uh, uh looking forward to his home round of cool fab next week yeah i presume that he will be jay king uh, pit bike uh, champion of 2017 in cool fab racing um amongst other achievements of course um will be once again uh, uh taking to the track I presume, anyway, at uh, Red Lodge next weekend at uh, the fifth round of the 2018 Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. Uh, and you can hear live coverage right here on Motorsport Radio, motorsport.radio, and on the Cool Fab Racing uh, social media channels and website as well. Got you fully covered. Uh, and uh, the, the why do we mention this? Well, because uh, Cool Fab Racing brings all the best talent directly into uh, BSB and they are on the road to MotoGP so they are now officially uh, sort of accredited as uh, as being on that path to MotoGP so all the young riders uh, starting out doing well um, will uh, hopefully get uh, get recognized perhaps uh, in their first step to getting into MotoGP um, you might get recognized for being in the British Talent Cup first of all, as uh, many young riders uh, already are. British Talent Cup, what is it? Well, it's uh, already been uh, racing on the I think, World Superbike uh, bill at uh, Donington. It's been uh, somewhat of a regular on the BSB bill at uh, various rounds. 
as well. And uh, this week, uh, the British Talent Cup, uh, which is run by Dorna and MSV, I believe, um, have released their sort of shortlist for um, contenders for next year's uh, um, British Talent Cup. So the 2019 provisional list has been released, Kiko, and uh, they are all uh, names that uh, we were... Well, we're familiar of, with. Yeah, actually, that, 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 that I will know from the likes of Cool Fab Racing. Um, Even you have a clue what we're talking about now, then. Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, J. Abel, Sean Abel, uh, not, to, not to go through every single one of them, because the, oh, the no, list is quite Oh, no, let's do it. Extensive. Go on. We oh. may as well. We should just clarify. Okay. It okay. is... Um, a selection event. These are not the definite confirmed ones. This is a selection event. Yeah. Jay Abel, Sean Abel, Ash Barnes, Callum Beach, uh, Blade and Beddows, Aditya Singh, Bihal, Jack Bell, Nathan Breeley, Cameron Breeden, James Bull, Rory Burnett, uh, Jacob Clark, Reese Coates, uh, Torin Collins, Declan Connell, Harry Cook, Brody Crockford, Harrison Desoy, Cam Dixon, Rossi Dobson, Elliot Dufton, Anthony Eagle, Luke Gardner, Cameron Hall, Holly Harris, female in there, great to see. George Hopper, Owen Jenner, Mason Johnson, Lewis Jones. Uh, oh, how are we saying that? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Sam? Oh, oh, Sam? Oh. I, presume, Someone... I presume it's his brother. I, I don't, I don't I, I... think it is. Uh, it might be. Oshin, Oshin yeah. Jones, oh, I don't know. Jack Kirsch, Jeremy Knight, <laughs> Samuel Laidlow. William Lath Lathrope, uh, Harry Lee, Jamie Lyons, Ross Maguire, uh, Oshin Maher, Owen Meller, Dylan Meller, Shane Mooney, Casey O'Gorman, massive talent, Casey O'Gorman, Eddie O'Shea, Eddie Owen O'Shea. Patterson, Adam Phipps, Ewan Percy, Elliot Pinson, Oscar Pinson, Luke Power, Joshua Ray, another Ray. Oh, God, we can't cope with any more, surely. There's so many in bikes at the moment. Louis Rendell, Jack Roach, Matthew Rutter, Zach Siviert, Ben Simpson, Ben Taylor, Annabelle Thompson, Kyle Tinker, Corey Tinker, Logan Turner, Alessandro Valente, Cody Wagemaker, shall we go with that? Uh, Lissy Whitmore, another female in there, as is Annabelle Thomas, we should clarify. And finally, Jack Worth. That's all in alphabetical order. So, sorry, yes. kids, if we extensive uh, list. Names. Yes, so, sorry if we completely made a horlix of that. But, but, um, but yeah, yes. some of these, some of these names, like it, like uh, as as we mentioned, are literally. Uh, already making quite a uh, quite a name for themselves uh, on the on very in various paddocks, uh, not the least of which is the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship. Great to see uh, Casey O'Gorman uh, being given the chance to show what he can do to make the final list, um, and that will be uh, um, good to see him and um, all the other Cool Fab um, riders as well. And uh, it's good to uh, to see the likes of Holly Harris as well. And uh, I know uh, a, a special shout out. He wasn't uh, he wasn't actually on the list, but uh, he, he I'm certain that he will be, um, probably next year. Uh, I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, I, I I that's how I actually uh, got to. It was on Facebook. He actually posted the link. Uh, it was one of the riders who um, who said he didn't make it. It was it was a bit gutted. Uh, I won't name and shame, but uh, yeah. Go on. No, go no, on. No, just you because he didn't, he didn't make the list, and, and okay. he, he'll be he'll be in the Cool Fab Paddock next week, and uh, and we will uh, we will catch up and maybe we'll try and do an interview with him. But uh, yeah, yes. for all those riders, well done. Uh, it'll be uh, fantastic to uh, to track you uh, your guys' progress on uh, on BT Sport because uh, I know that uh, selection process is uh, is all filmed and broadcast. Uh, as uh, and uh, I'm putting to uh, um, where does it go on to the BSB? Uh, it'll go on like the BSB show, won't it? I'm, I'm sure. Um, uh, yes, I think it goes back on BT though as well. Yeah. Um, so in the MotoGP program. So yeah, or maybe both. It'll certainly be on the the MotoGP. It'll website. be on TV. Yeah, and uh, of course we will keep you up to date with uh, with who does what and who's doing great. And uh, and some such. Um, so yeah, that's that's all pretty well and good. Um, any other uh, comments that flooded in? Uh, have we had any comment flooding from from anyone anywhere? Shall we? We'll have a look, shall we? Uh, da, 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 da. 
Just hold the line, caller, as we, um... Jay King's been on, I noticed. Uh, he, yes. uh, he just reiterated what we just said there. Uh, good luck to all the, uh, uh Cool Fab, uh, guys who made it through, um, to the British Talent Cup trials as well. And, uh, James Young, uh, says, uh, he's got to go. Take it easy. Oh, well, uh... Oh. See you, James. But well, we should just say before we end the show of what's on the site at the moment, we have an exclusive Ben Curry interview. All written up. Go and check it out it's on the Facebook page, uh, Motorsport Radio. It's also on the website, www.motorsport.radio. Uh, we will have a British Superbike preview that's going up tonight, shared big time tomorrow. But if you're still tuned in, get it read tonight. Uh, we'll put it up for you. There'll be a Stock 1000 preview and also British Super Sport preview. There'll be some MotoGP content. We've got some Bradley Smith stuff on there at the moment, as well as Mark Marquez. Um, all in all, quite a lot of stuff. Kawasaki, there'll be some more insight there. And Tom Sykes fall out from that as well. Maybe we should try and see if we can liaise with uh, some PR people, Lester, and see what we can find out for our viewers live on the show. Uh, yeah, we, we certainly should do. Uh, it's about uh, it's about high time that we uh, that we got some uh, more guests on the show. I think uh, as yes. as good as it is, uh, just sitting uh, here talking about who we think mm -hmm. did well at the weekend and yada yada and, yada and, and straying slagging into, off Herman Tilke and and, yeah. and straying into black puddings uh, territory from all over the EU. Um, but occasionally we do like to have uh, riders on the show to actually uh, harass them as well. So uh, if you are I'm just a rider... trying to think, where was it? I had an amazing black pudding. Oh, for... Anyway, I think it was at the rooms at Twenty Nine Bruce Street, done firmly in City Centre, Town Centre. Is that the one? Uh, that you, the, the place that you burnt down? Flooded. Oh, listen to this. It's story time because oh, we God. need to fill a bit of time. Last year, I flooded the place. And when I got there, they remembered me and said, oh, you're the guy who flooded said the bathroom barred. last year. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, we had a laugh and everything. But I was, in the sh I was about to get in the, uh, in the, in the bath and uh, I turned the tap on and whatnot and it's not filling up. And when I was in Honduras, we stayed in this uh, city, San Pedro Sula, crime capital of the world. And the plug... There was no physical plug. It was like you turn it and a pallet comes under the plug hole. So I thought, oh, well, maybe there... Because I, I didn't have my glasses on. I couldn't see a plug, so maybe that's how it was. So I'm twisting this the, 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 the little knob and everything. Um, that wasn't the only knob in the room, because obviously there was a silly one like me. Um, and I'm twisting it and thinking, well, why is it still, like, there's still suction on it? So I decide I'll turn the shower on as well to so try and fill it up quicker. Because if I get in, then when I get in, the water will rise and I can put the jacuzzi bath on and it'll stay at that level. So anyway, I'm filling it's it up. It's a mystery you up. flooded this place last year, it, isn't it? It's filling up, but it's still, it's still a suction and it's not filling up very fast. So I put the cold water on, left it for 10 minutes, went downstairs, got myself a, a bottle of recorded like, strawberry and lime and uh, came back up and the bath had filled up, uh, but it was now cold. <laughs> so... I, I haven't done it. I'm trying to work this out now. Like, I, I'm turning it around. I, I, I'm not. I'm. It's not working. I got in the bath to see if I could um, keep the water in. And look to my right. There's a bloody plug in now. I just didn't see it because I wasn't close enough. So I'm trying to fill the bath up with my plug. <laughs> It's terrible. And I'm, I'm saying I can't believe I've just done that. Spent half an hour trying to fill a bath, forgetting to put the plug in. If I ain't putting a jacuzzi on before it's full. I'm putting the. I'm trying to fill the bathroom. Don't plug. What a disaster! There you go. The uh, adventures of uh, Kiko Giles. If he's not uh, jinxing riders on track, only for them to fall over or fly over uh, another bike on track, literally seconds after the. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's going to win this, so he'll do well. Yeah, there he's leading the race. Uh, he's uh, either flooding hotels or setting fire to things inadvertently or something else. I can't think what else you've done. Well, I think your clutch will be the next thing that goes on your on the motorsport media hospitality unit, Lester. I don't. I don't. Um... Well, if if we're not at Red Lodge next week, <laughs> then it may be. It, will be. it may be the clutch that ends up clutching at straws. Right. So uh, that uh, banal <laughs> banter uh, says it's time for the end of the yes, show. Desperate times. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, so a uh, big thank you to everyone who has tuned in to uh, to any version of tonight's show. And, uh, yeah, you've done really well to, uh, to stay with us. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, while the, uh, the show uh, 
got on his feet. We did a crutch low, basically. Um, if you don't crashed know. out, remounted, and <laughs> eventually finished. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, we we got there in the end. So a uh, big thank you to uh, to everyone for uh, just uh, either just pressing play for a couple of seconds just to see just because you're bored out of your faces or, or whatever, and uh, a massive thank you to everybody who is not in the UK tuned in for the first time ever as well. Uh, you're more than welcome to uh, to join us again, especially if you are brand new to motorsport radio. And also live in Rio de Janeiro, Belo Horizonte, or Fortaleza, or any other Brazilian city. We know we have massive following in South America, so um, <laughs> why is this? Uh, I guess we're just big in <laughs> did America. We have, did Alex Barros come on the show without us looking, or Felipe Massi give us a shout out? Or uh, Yeah, uh, we should uh, maybe start contacting a few <laughs> of these uh, people. But uh, yeah, no, a lot of uh, English speaking uh, people from South all America. over the world, South Americans, <laughs> and uh, we get a lot of uh, Filipino uh, uh, places mostly because we spam the show to all the Facebook groups and stuff in Thailand and the Philippines and stuff, and, and India as well. Vietnam right? so, and Bangladesh. And... So hello uh, and welcome and goodbye because uh, that's the end of the show if you just tuned in. Uh, so, wow. <laughs> exactly. So uh, thank you very much. We'll be back, I think, next week, next Thursday, maybe. Well, were we, were we travelling down on the Friday to Red Lodge? We will be, yes. So, uh, so we'll, Oh, we might have a show pre-recorded and then put out. Or will it be exactly. pre-recorded or, and put out live? Don't know. I, I think I, I spoke too soon when I said we'll be back live next week. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, 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 we, <laughs> if, the, <laughs> if the studio isn't packed up in the van ready to go, uh, then it will be probably a pre-record on the Thursday, uh, but that'll be uh, just so we can take a running jump uh, for the live coverage of the Cool Fab Racing British Mini Bikes Championship live from Red Lodge next week. To Sports Radio, the Superbike Show on Motorsport Radio.